Hi there, and here we are back in the midst of our discussion of the PostgreSQL type system. Okay, as we've seen already, the PostgreSQL type system is rich and extensive, but this doesn't mean that we cannot enrich it further, for example, with data types that we have created on our own. <clears throat> and along with the data type, with these data types, I'm sorry about that, along with these data types, we are, of course, uh, capable of creating new values that go with these data types. And this is exactly what enumerations allow us to do in PostgreSQL. Um, we are introducing completely new types, tau, which have not been there before. And along with these uh, new types, or this new type tau, goes a set of values, a set of values that has not been introduced before and that only belong to the data type tau and are thus and uh, different from all other values that existed before inside the system. Okay, so let's see how that goes. <clears throat> so we are creating a new type along with new values, along with new values vi, as you can see here. And the syntax is just create type tau, the new type, never seen before, as enum, and then uh, enumeration, an explicit list of n values that are considered the values of this type tau. These are the only values of type tau, there are no others. Once we've done that, uh, type tau can be used like any other type that we've uh, uh, found before in the system. So we could, for example, use casting to, uh, to make sure that a particular value vi is interpreted as one of the new values tau here. Okay, so how do we introduce new values? How are, which, which syntax is used to introduce something that is really different from all other built-in values? Well, the answer is probably expected. We are using the SQL convention of using string notation again. Uh, so all these vi's will be uh, values enclosed in single quotes, so literal literal tau values in a sense, and uh, only those that have been explicitly listed in this create type statement are really considered to be values of tau. All other string values that we could find, we cannot cast to tau, for example, they would not be considered members or elements of type tau. Okay, storage of these uh, of these values is actually quite compact. So regardless of the length of the name of the value or the literal representation between quotes that you've chosen for the VI here, the internal storage will always consume four bytes. So there is a mapping going on from these literal values that we introduced in the create, create type declaration to some internal representation that is just four bytes wide. Uh, this is not a set of values. This is just, this is in fact an enumeration of values. So this would be considered the first value. This would be considered the last value in this enumeration. And as such, they are implicitly ordered. Uh, VI is considered less than VJ if they are, if VI is listed before VJ in this sequence of enumerated values. This is just what is uh, noted down here. And with such implicit ordering goes support for other, other ordering related operations. For example, the min and max aggregates could be sensibly applied to columns of type tau, and we could uh, find the minimum and maximum enumerated value inside a column based on the order that we've been introducing here in the create tape declaration. Is that that's about it actually. So let's switch over to a simple example of, of using enumerations and user-defined types inside PostgreSQL. So here's one such uh, uh, enumeration that I'm, that, I'm, uh, that I'm defining. And the new, the new type name is episode because I'm going to represent the possible episodes uh, of the Star Wars family of movies. Again, today is May the 4th. May the 4th be with you, it's Star Wars Day, happy family. All right, so there is exactly nine Skywalker Saga movies currently, and probably there will never be more, uh, who knows. So these are the nine possible values, the nine possible values of the Skywalker Saga type. All right, so this is a type called episode, and it has exactly this family of nine values. Um, 
episode has not existed as a type before. If it had, this drop statement, this drop type statement would have removed all traces of that type from our system. You see that I'm using the cascade modifier here to this drop type uh, statement, saying that all other database objects that are relying on some type episode that might have existed before, uh, for example, other tables that were storing uh, values of type episode, all of these would have been removed using this drop type if exists episode cascade statement. All right, so we really have a clean slate. This is a new type with exactly nine new values. So let's create it. There you go. Okay, so uh, let's see whether the system really knows that the domain of our type episode really includes these nine values and nothing else. So let's try to uh, convince the system that ESB Empire Strikes Back, the best Star Wars movie ever produced, is indeed a valid episode marker or symbol. And it is. All right. Okay. So any other non-Skywalker Saga film or episode marker, for example, Rogue One, I love the film, but it's not a Skywalker Saga film and it does not consider an episode in the context of this example, would be rejected. This is not a valid input value, not a valid representation of a literal representation of a value that would be considered a member of type episode. It would be rejected. Okay, so now that we've got the episode type, we can... Uh, use it to build and construct other database objects. For example, this Star Wars table, all right? This will be a three column table in which we use film of type episode as the primary key. And uh, you can see we just use episode just like any other built-in type to our system. It, it can assume the same roles as other, any other built-in type. And together with these uh, episode markers, we will store the film's title and the release dates in the Star Wars table. So let's create all of this together. Okay, so there we go. And uh, all of you guys know the release dates of the films by heart. I don't, so I have to use this table that I'm going to fill with, uh, with the nine films of the Skywalker saga. All right. Uh, and as you can see, some implicit casting is going on, as we have discussed in, in previous videos. So, for example, the values in the first column are of type episode, and uh, implicit cast will be attempted by the system before these literal values are being inserted into the Star Wars table. They are casted to episode values to four byte values, internal representations of the episode enumerated type. This should go well. This is just text. These are valid date representations. I think we can build a nine row table out of this statement. And sure we can. All right. So now that we have the data, we can uh, meaningfully reproduce it. For example, using uh, this table and using criteria like um, uh, ordering criteria like, uh, uh, like the release date, for example. That would be uh, the historical release order of all the nine Star Wars films. And we could just re reproduce that by sorting by the re release date column, as you can see here. Okay, so there is some jumbling going on because have, we have the prequel trilogy uh, in, in front here, but the order by release date should put a new hope in front. So let's do that. There you go. This is the release date order of all the nine films. There are other suitable orders to look at these films. And one of the this order is the so-called Star Wars Machete order, uh, which is a rearrangement of all the films in a, in a sensible and reasonable manner so that the big the big saga that is being narrated by the nine Skywalker films comes uh, out really nicely. And I can, uh, I can uh, reproduce this Bachet order by just choosing a different ordering criterion here. Let me choose this one. The film, 
the film column. Okay, so let's scroll back to the film column. This is the film column. Okay, and ordering the values of the by the by the film column will not produce, for example, any alphabetical or uh, lexicographic ordering. It will respect the ordering of the type of the film column, which is the episode enumerated type, and ordering of the episode. Uh, Values is given explicitly by this ordering of values in the create type declaration. So in this in this order, a new hope comes first, and the rise of Skywalker comes last. But uh, let's check how everything else is positioned in the machete order. All right, so let's go. So this is the order prescribed by the e episode enumerated type. And it starts out with A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back and then switches to the prequel trilogy uh, to see how all the things started to then switch back to episode six before we enter the sequel trilogy. So next time when you watch binge watch all the Star Wars movies, maybe try Machete order and uh, use the order prescribed by our enum data type episode. All right, so much for our discussion or brief discussion of uh, enumerated types, new types and new values in PostgreSQL. All right, uh, next video we'll switch back to predefined type in PostgreSQL of which there are still plenty. Looking forward to that. See you then. Bye bye.